Hello, I'm Artifacts Mars, and this is a Tyranny Watch News Special Field Report, National Day of Prayer, coming to you from Huntley Falls, New York, in a little park called Harry Allen Park. This is all for fun, get together with people. I thought I would document it as long as I'm here. <sighs> Nothing going on, they're playing a little music up there, I got a couple people singing, which is fine. I'm going to remind audience out there, I am an agnostic, but I don't have anything against religion as long as it's uh, not chopping people's heads off or something like that. That's where I draw the line. So, we'll document a little bit of this and participate, then I'll be on my way to work. I want to fix Mars. Okay, uh, that's maybe 30 people here. It's Thursday. A lot of people are at work. I got to get to work myself. You know, see, look around and see if there's anybody here I know. So far I'm drawing a blank. That is a Presbyterian church. I think it's Presbyterian. I'd have to double check on that. I have been in there once. But as you can see, quiet, serene. That's the way it should be. And I'm assuming we're seeing some religious folks and all that. I don't want to disrupt the prayer service or anything by filming during that. I would estimate the... Seems to be in pretty good mood. People are in. Not going to do a lot with this video, but just so I would show you what's going on here and get a close up of that sign up front. Sign says, we'll zoom in on this, sign says, Jesus is risen, you want to say is fallen, choose Christ. Well, I don't think things are quite over yet, but I do have some things straightened out. When I get near the time of the service, I don't want to disrupt it, so... Just leave it at this. Document items here. Handful of people. Nice setting. Prayer for our nation. This is such an important day for it shows Americans openly, openly united in faith and shows the exercising of our First Amendment rights from our Constitution, freedom of religion and expression, and it shows America's dependence on God. Our country was founded on Judeo-Christian belief. Our forefathers knew the importance of prayer, and today we show that we remember that also. This year's theme is Wake Up America, and the scripture is from Isaiah 58.1. Shout it aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Our country faces so many challenges, economic and social and moral issues, natural disasters, military conflicts, senseless acts of terrorism. It is fitting for us as American citizens to come together and pray. There are divisive issues all around us, in our families, churches, communities, and country. But today we can be encouraged as we put those divisive issues aside and unite our hearts and voices in prayer. There's tremendous power in prayer. Prayer has the power to restore us as individuals 
and as a nation. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen. When we are together as a body, corporately praying, something very special happens. We become America united in prayer, one nation under God. To begin, I want to introduce Pastor Bob Wheeler from Lima Baptist Church, who will give the prayer to the nation. Thank you, Don. Based on that scripture from Isaiah 58, verse 1, again, that says, Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. The 2016 National Day of Prayer Honorary Chairman, Dr. Tony Evans, has written a prayer specifically for today. The National Day of Prayer Task Force is encouraging Americans from coast to coast to pray this prayer at noon, and we missed it by only a few minutes, God forgive us. But this will create a huge wave of prayer going out across this country at this time of day. And don't we know that this, prayer, this country needs prayer at any time of day, and if we're a few minutes late, we will just join that wave. How does that sound? So this was a prayer written by Tony Evans that I will read verbatim for you, to you. So let's bow and pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today as a humble people, desperate for your supernatural intervention on behalf of our beloved nation. First, we thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed on our land, blessings that have allowed us to bring so much good and benefit to not only your own citizens, but also to the rest of the world. The very ideals upon which this country was founded were based on biblical truths. No matter how some try to rewrite history, to deny that fact today. This is why our hearts are so broken over how you continue to be marginalized and dismissed by both our people and our institutions. We're also saddened by the fact that your people have contributed greatly to the spiritual apathy that now engulfs us. Our satisfaction in remaining religious without being fully committed to living out the truths of your word has caused us to become co-conspirators with the forces of evil that are destroying us as a society. It is for that reason that we personally and collectively repent of our carnality and recommit ourselves to becoming visible and verbal disciples of Jesus Christ. Enable us, God, by your Holy Spirit, to no longer be secret agent Christians, but rather to publicly declare and live out your truth in a spirit of love so that you will feel welcome in our country once again. Thank you, God, for your promise to hear our prayers when we call on you with hearts of repentance and obedience, which is how we are appealing to you today, Father. On behalf of your church, God, we affirm afresh the priority that you are to us, that you would fill every dimension of our lives as we seek to bring your glory through the advancement of your kingdom in our personal lives, our family lives, the lives of our churches, and of our government leaders. We confidently invite heaven's intervention into all the affairs of our nation, and we praise you in advance for your answer. In Jesus' name, we pray all these things that the folks gathered today said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for praying together in that. I guess the worship team is going to lead us now in a song. It's going to play now, Build Your Kingdom Here. The words are in your bulletin. You'll just join in. It feels comfortable for some of you. This may be a song, but join in as you wish.
pray today, we will offer up prayers around six different topics. For each topic, there will be a scripture read, a lead into the prayer topic, and a time for individuals, uh, you, the people, to offer up prayers on the topic, either out loud or in the quiet of your own hearts. Our first topic is personal renewal. Gary Albright will begin. I'm going to read Psalm 39, verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Our prayer will be led by Reverend Brian Smith from St. Mark's Lutheran Church. nation cannot heal itself. It desperately needs God's help to change. We need God's help to change as individuals. So humbly we come before him seeking him in prayer. God calls us to pray for our nation, for its leaders, communities, for our families, and to intercede effectively for others. We need to confess and repent of our own wicked ways as well as those of our nation. As believers, we set the example of this kind of repentance for our nation. How many humble, praying people does it take for God to forgive and heal a nation? God promised to spare the corrupt cities of Sodom and Gomorrah if only ten righteous people were found there. And the Almighty is waiting for Americans to turn back to Him in prayer and repentance. May we this day determine to surrender our ways to Him. We pray. Oh Lord, help us to turn away from our own wicked ways as individuals and as a nation to seek you. Show us your direction for our lives. Forgive our sense of self-sufficiency and our pride. Lead us in your righteous ways. For righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. May we learn to act justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with you, God. As we consider our need for personal renewal, Lord, hear our prayers. For the renewal of your Holy Spirit active in the lives of your church, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we uh, continue to pray for family and friends, we'd like to introduce uh, one of the newer pastors on staff at Lima Baptist Church, Pastor Tony Labar. Thank you, Pastor Brian. I've been asked to read the words of Jesus from Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 12 from the NIV. Jesus said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father your Father in Heaven give you good gifts to those who ask Him. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. But this sums up the Law and the Prophets. Pastor Dick Dreyer, Hill Gospel Church. For our family and friends, families are unraveling in our society stresses abound as families try to maintain a nurturing household outside the influences such as economy, health care, employment or lack thereof, and government pressure on freedoms have great impact on us as individuals and on our family. May the Lord give us peace and help our families 
our friends and individuals each day and in every way. Prayer offers us hope in the times of uncertainty. And it's important that the fathers and mothers be able to lead their families in a daily time of prayer and meeting with the Lord because that's where the strength is. That's where we get our strength and our help. And to really encourage them in biblical values so that we can have and enjoy that strength and help in the different temptations and the pressures that we feel. Let us pray together. Dear God, help us to build strong families with godly values. May our homes be full of peace and love and forgiveness for family members and friends. Lord, please protect marriages and restore broken relationships. Give parents courage, wisdom, and strength to raise their children in your ways. Guard children from the evils of the world. Heal our loved ones who struggle with physical and mental illnesses. Help those who are struggling financially and those out of work to have their needs met during these difficult times. Comfort those who have lost loved ones. Give them your peace that passes all understanding. We are friends and family members who do not yet know you come to a personal saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Hear our prayers, O Lord, for our family and friends. Father, we just look to you especially to raise up men and women who will lead their families to meet with you each day, that they might know your strength and your provision, your wisdom and your love and your grace to help and to bless the families so that we might be a strength and salt and light to our, our communities and to this nation, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. I want to introduce uh, Pastor Janet Hufford from the Menden Church to lead us. Nowadays we're warned that we should have too much salt in our diets. But if there's not salt in our bodies, the minerals not present, the enzymes go out of balance and there's not health. And in the time of Jesus, salt was known to be the, that which preserved the food. It was used for cleansing wounds and for bringing healing. That is our duty as a people and as churches and as ministry organizations. And so it is, I read from the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus' words, from Matthew, verse 5. Chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how can the saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives way to it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Pastor uh, Magnesi from Calvary. Chapel Southside in Honeyeye Falls is now here to open this time of prayer for churches and ministry organizations. Thank you, Janet.
thing we should never forget, our country was founded on Judean Christian values, yet the right of freedom of religion is being challenged like it never has before. Mm -hmm. To openly display the Ten Commandments is considered an offense to many. And to take a stand for your Christian beliefs and business is considered cause for a lawsuit today. Individuals in the church are under attack. Yet the church today still holds out the truth of God. To the community of the world. It's in a position to impact our population for eternity. As well as an influence for godly social change. When people know the truth of God, it gives hope for all, for every situation. God is our refuge and our fortress, in whom we can trust. Our churches and ministry leaders need our prayers. Let's bow our hearts in prayer. Heavenly Father, strengthen your body of believers, the church, for times that are ahead. May it continue to be steadfast. May it keep its eyes fixed on you. You promised that perfect peace. Help it to reach out and be that place of shelter for people in crisis. May the church and its people be a vessel of healing, revival, and hope in our community and across our country and to the world. Help our church leaders to stand firm in the faith and be men and women of integrity and courage, united in one spirit. Grant them wisdom and discernment necessary to meet the tasks before them. May the youth in our communities be impacted by your word spoken in churches, the word of God, the Bible, and in youth groups, and in young life. They are the next generation of believers. May we spur them on in love. Help us not to be ashamed of the gospel, but to speak out and tell others the good news about you, and as Jesus says, John chapter 3, verse 3, you must be born again. Hear our prayers, O oh God, for churches, for ministry organizations, and their leaders. Lord, we now pray, we lift up the ministers, the priests, pastors, lay leaders, and teachers in our communities, in our churches.